This is Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel. When I think about the critical issues facing black and brown residents in the St. Louis area, I often ask the questions, how did we get here? What's holding us back? And how do we progress? At 9 PBS, we want to deepen our understanding and change the narrative. Join me as I look for answers and discover solutions on today's podcast. His journey is the stuff of movies. A caricature artist at an amusement park, painting portraits of rap and R&B artists, and then somehow the late musician Prince buys one of his pieces. Today you can see his work all around the St. Louis region. But it was his popular Black Fatherhood project, 365 Days of Dad, that truly expanded his footprint. Would he do that again? Visual artist Kababi Bayok talks diversity in the art world. Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel is supported in part by Midwest Bank Center, the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation, and Orvin and Latrice Kimbro. Welcome back to another episode of Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel. I am so excited for today's conversation. Somebody that I have admired from afar. His artwork is in my home, and I will admit to him in a minute how his artwork is in my home. I hope he loves the story. I know I do. But let me say first, thank you to you for tuning in. Thank you to you for subscribing. And all you have to do is click the button, and you become a subscriber. And then I know a lot of you are downloading the podcast, and that's a wonderful thing to do because you can download it and listen to it later on. Uh, We have a record number of downloads, and we want We want to bust that record and create another record. So go ahead and download this podcast. And then the last thing to do is to share it. You know, when you have some good food and you say, this is delicious, taste it. That's the same thing we want you to do with this podcast. This is an amazing conversation. Listen. So share it with your friends and family and your colleagues as well. So subscribe, download, and share. And if you hear something that is moving to you today, leave us a comment because we definitely will read those and share those. I will share those with management because <laughs> I need them to know that hiring me was a good thing. <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're talking about representation as we always do on Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel, uh, but as it pertains to the arts. And as you heard already, our guest is the internationally known Kababi Bayak. Thank you for joining us on Listen St. Louis. Thank you for having me. It's so great to have you. And if you look around the room, we have uh, posters on the walls. But soon and very soon, we will have something of yours on our walls. Okay. This, so uh, so uh, shall be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do yay, it. Yay. <laughs> I don't think I knew that your name was, a, was an acronym that you created when you were a college student, I did. right? I was young. Yeah, I was on my own. I mean, that's what you do. So, yeah. Kababi I, means? Creative black artists battling ignorance. Love so, it. Yeah. And then your last name later, right? Did yeah. you create it later? I did. Mm-hmm. So, Blessed African Youth of Creativity. For your, Did you have children at the time, or you were thinking the of? Thinking of, and not wanting to fall into the children just have dad's last name, but the name of dad and mom. So, that's had, how that came about. And had a meaning. What is it that we are ignorant about? Honestly, I, that name is just reminding me to continue to grow, and that I don't know everything. I think people think it is otherwise, which right. it could be. But even in that, I think after painting um, certain projects and working on certain images and projects, that name has become more and more meaningful as far as the the ignorance of others, the things I paint, like black fatherhood and these kind of things. But initially it was just reminding me to grow. And you have grown because looking at photos of you from your early days and then yes. and now this gray gray haired bearded man before me I love it um what have you learned over the years uh, of being an an artist and an illustrator hey, I don't know so we, much. I don't know we, we don't have, have enough time we don't yes. have enough time we don't have enough time <laughs> you know there's a lot of different things that go through my mind um just even what it means to do this, to be this, is it a calling, is it a guy given, is it a choice? Like those things constantly run through my brain. Really? Still? Oh yeah, to this day. Yeah. Cause I mean, I just on my own love doing it. Yeah. And too amazed sometimes, not that I just 
keep getting asked to provide art for people, but sometimes the people who do the requesting, mm-hmm. the folks that don't even know, can't grasp their mind that somebody even does this, you know, and that goes to a whole nother conversation. But yeah, it's just a very interesting world that I reside in. Do you accept that it is a calling or or has it been the, the recipients of your art who have informed you that it's a calling based on what your art makes us feel? There you go. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I, I understand both sides of the argument where some people say it is divine and mm-hmm. what you're doing because a lot of times, yeah, I'll paint something. The things that I'm excited about don't necessarily get received as such and that reminds me of intention. Mm-hmm. Whereas other things I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Or we'll get the most emotional reaction from others. Like, so sometimes you just have to let go and just, yeah, I'm not supposed to know how it's going to be received. Just got to keep doing it. Like, so Spoken like a true artist. <laughs> You're supposed to put it out there and then let the recipient let, let you know Absolutely. That, that they were moved or, or, or upset or whatever, whatever the emotion may be. Yeah. Did you, um, did you pick up a, a, a brush when you were four years old, when did it start for you? I, I always drew cartoons. Any like, Most students in class drawing. I love to draw little war scenes. Oh, wait a minute. Now, we all aren't like you. You are my most students in class. Uh, okay. Stick maybe figures I'm... over here. Internationally known <laughs> illustrator over there. I don't go know. Ahead. I always tell people, the guy that drew Fido died on a napkin became rich. <laughs> okay, it go ahead. It was a stick figure. Go ahead. So you're but in class and you're... I always drew, but I never really tripped off of it. I wasn't in the school at all. My mom maybe saw something because she always brought paper and pens from work, the little reams of paper. She was on Scott Air Force Base. Um but it wasn't until high school I took one class. Again, not motivated, so never really pushed by my teacher. He didn't see anything there. Like I probably had, oh. you could probably see talent, but no drive. But once I was going to graduate, I hadn't taken ACT, SAT, so I had to do something. So I went to BAC, the SW- SWIC, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bell Area yeah. Community College, then right. Southwestern Illinois Community College now. Absolutely, right. mm-hmm. and I was g- good at math. Again, just not inspired. So it was either math or art. Chose art, and just kept going with it. I, I'm I'm so glad that you are saying that you weren't driven and you weren't inspired and you weren't into school. None of it. I'm glad you're saying that because for so many parents. That's alarming and concerning. And then what do we do as parents? Absolutely. And then what are teachers seeing? Yeah. Because the thought is, yeah, if you don't succeed in school, life is ruined. Like, because that's the end all be all. Right, right. I know it's a whole other world now. Like, like one of our favorite shows is Shy and seeing this cat about to go off to California and game. Like, who thought that that would ever become a lifestyle and a source of income for young cats? We tell people they're wasting time. It's the same way with art. Like, parents can't see it because we have seen no examples. Exactly. And and we are we have this image in our heads. Society tells us what success looks like, Absolutely. what drive looks like. Yep. And if your child doesn't fit in that box, and especially for a black boy, and I'm the mother of two of them, they're now young men, uh, we can easily become alarmed and taken off the path and not because we I can't see it. How do I nurture something that I'm told by society is problematic? Absolutely. And so me and my wife, Amber, we have this analogy of throwing darts. Like just keep throwing darts. You don't know what's going to hit. Mm-hmm. You think about kids and not being inspired. Like a lot of kids, one, there's no dartboard at all. So all they see is what's in front of them. Mm-hmm. They're not given a bunch of examples. So... We were just having a conversation about the South, too. Like, if you don't see, you don't even know what to aim right. for. You can't even dream and it. Just yeah. seeing something on the screen or on the computer doesn't mean that it's actually real or an Instagram. It just is a thing that somebody else is able to do. doesn't necessarily connect with inside of you that this is something that you could do. And so I think that was the – yeah, I, I could always draw, but it didn't co- connect in my brain that that's something I pers- sh- could pursue. You know, I, I just thought I'd be a truck driver or – for real? Oh, yeah. Cause, I mean, that's all I... And that's good pay. Because I watch TV a lot, wait, and you wait. kept seeing commercials. Exactly. <laughs> and, and they were even, like, this is a living. I was like, this okay. This is a good living. So there's an option. Yeah. Because it wasn't going to be the military, because, you know, back then, the draft and all, I was the only son, so I didn't have to worry about that. So, you know, Oh, that's right. That was a real thing back yeah, then. Yeah, absolutely. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 51, yeah. Oh, I remember 51. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, now I have to take a left turn because as I am reading about you, and I feel like I, I, I have your art. Here's my admission, and then we'll talk about the 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 turn your career took, and how you began illustrating, um, and the 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 musician Prince, the late Prince. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to talk about Prince in a second. But here's my admission: you when you did the 365 Days of Dad in 2012, and we certainly would talk about the inspiration of that. I immediately went to as I as I understood everybody did. They went to their anniversary. They wanted to pick that date and order whatever you were making on that date. I went to my husband's birthday. I went to both of my son's birthdays. Uh, the the one was born in 1999, so I went to 19. You know, all of the dates within a a week or two that I chose were gone. It was immediately successful, right? Right. So then you put out a calendar after you finished it. You put out a calendar, right? And so I bought uh, that. Okay, I see where you're going. <laughs> you're one of those. I'm one of those. <laughs> I'm one of those. I bought that calendar. Cut it up. I sure did. <laughs> I ripped it ever so carefully out. I chose one of the months, and I went to Michael's, nice. and I had it framed. All right. Took my mother-in-law with me, and it is beautiful. Right and I on. gave it to, to my husband on Father's Day. Okay. Because I, I couldn't get the date that I wanted can't afford your work because <laughs> your work is now you know so beautifully priced for you beautiful for you not for me and so that's how i have a 365 days of dad okay was from your from, from and i have the calendar you know yeah. still yeah that's how i went it, it, it was a very emotional project yeah so On why why did initially why did you do it and then why was it emotional uh initially i wasn't making any money on my art mm. And so my little creative brain, I have no idea how it came up, but I was just like, okay. And this is when Facebook, this is before Instagram was really popping. Um, I think it was there, but nobody was really there. But I was just like, I just thought of you know, if I could paint something every day and give it a price that people could handle mm -hmm. and a size that seemed like a bargain for that price, right. then it should be a no brainer to sell one every day of the year. And I've done wall ball and painted live in front of people in four hours. So in my mind, like I can, I can do four hours a day. So that's all. I, that's as deep as I got with it. <laughs> and then I put it out to the world. You know, I didn't and say how many kids. I ain't say if there was a scene, no scene. Like I ain't work all that stuff out. I just say, hey y'all, I'm gonna do this project. And at first, I just asked people to send me photos because I was worried I wouldn't have enough reference material right. for a whole year right right so i wasn't necessarily thinking people should commission the day i just asked for photos so i started getting some and then people started saying hey can we put in a request for a certain date mm -hmm. and in my mind i was like oh this is guaranteed sales and so absolutely i, I was like yeah and I so i went from that to first well i don't know first but in there there's one um woman locally and she's like i want the last one and so the last one sold. She don't, I don't care what it is. I just want the last one. Wow. And then other people were like, yeah, I want my husband's birthday, my yep. son's an anniversary, this, that, All and the other. All of that. Which is great. It is wonderful. But, yeah, out of 365, like, I got a two, I got the 266 by the end of the year, which meant there were 100 people who hadn't gotten their mm -hmm. husband's birthday gift right. or anniversary gift. So then... So emotion not just on my end, e emails coming from the other side. Oh. Like you said, you were gonna be done. Like I'm still waiting. And sometimes I had to say, hey, how about you tell the person that you bought them something, right? And so they right, know right, about right, right. the project. Yeah, I bet they'll get it. And so For they sure. would say, oh, I told him, and he said it's okay. And I was like, so after we had gone through all this stress and everything, because I can't do nothing. So I people can... became consumers, and they were like, where's my? <sighs> yes, Lord. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would not have done that to you. Uh, but <laughs> it, it was a very, uh, but despite the ups, downs, and all around, it was probably one of the best things, the best decisions I could ever make. It so. was a national, international hit. Yeah. Do you remember the first news story that I don't. at all? It was a blur. It was just. Because there were so many. I mean, I, I looked over in my living room and I saw all finished paintings lined up because also I had to ship them. So I was like, do I ship today or paint today? Like, So it was just. Wow. I was just. Wow. Yeah. See, and, and, and from my from my perspective, and not even just as a journalist, a reporter, a news anchor, 
um, who wanted the story and got the story, right? Mm -hmm. But as as a wife and and the mother, so I'm over here thinking, this is beautiful, and, <laughs> and I just want one. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and so are you in nothing that you said do I hear you say what we all thought maybe that the representation of black fathers is so negative that we you want it and I know that's it in after shipping and having to paint four hours a day and angry customers and in in news reporters hounding you for the story in all of that there was the desire to put out positive images of black fathers i think that is one of the things that helped me finish mm. yeah because there's also stories in there where i would there's folks who weren't necessarily in it but like they're, they're they would say my child and i get up every morning to see which one you posted oh. so i know there was a connection yeah and again back to the intention piece like i went in it to make a certain dollar amount every day you know, provide for family just mm -hmm. to sell art and feel legitimate, all those things. Wow. But it quickly showed me that yeah. it was bigger than just art. Like, it was connected. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always wanted to do a f series on black fatherhood. I knew about, you know, lack of representation and all that, but didn't think about what a whole year meant and what that would look like and what the metaphor was. Yeah. And so, because it also became... A lot of people buy my work, not just black folks. And so other people, everybody was asking for something. Mm. And so one who doesn't like conflict or telling people no, like I had to conversate with, there would be white women married to black men. Interesting. I mean, those I could do, but then if it was a black woman with a white man and I had to tell folks like, Nope. I was like, maybe after the project, I was like, but so, all, so all did, these dads have to be black. So did the black, <laughs> did the black one? <laughs> yes, all this was happening behind the scenes. So the black woman married to a white man wanted you to paint a white father. Yes. And you were like, nope. Can't do it. That's not what this is about. Yeah. I had no, I'm so happy. Uh Actually, I, I yeah. love learning, and I'm so I'm I'm so intrigued to know all of that. I had no idea. Yeah, and I think there was one of them. I think there was a white hand with a ring putting on a little black girl's finger. That might have been him. That might have found because I wasn't quite able to just say nope. I think that was my fudge. And after that, I just had to suck it up and just say nope. I'm not doing it. yeah. So you don't like conflict? Oh no, not at all. I'm working on it. I tried to do the whole Oprah thing, like once, like once you hit fifty, <laughs> like tell everybody. But yeah, I haven't com Back been off. able to completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I felt like, not that I ever thought you liked conflict, but that your your art for me clearly was making a statement, mm -hmm. and that statement was for some it was probably in your face, like any time, and this is that's what this is list in St. Louis because I'm focused on black and brown people only. Right. And I have already had to say to people who said, you know, we're having a da -da -da -da. can we get on your show? And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm doing. Yeah. That's not what I'm doing. And things are easier to say. It's easier to say no via email because I'm, you know, I don't see you. Right. And right. Not, we're not talking. But any time that we we've we've seen this, just focus on us. Somebody's going to take that the wrong way and somebody's going to feel a way about it and i'm 61 so i've i've done the it wasn't an oprah thing but just by as women we know we hit a certain age and stage and physiologically right we change and there's a point where we say don't care right no longer care what you think because i've gone through some things as a woman and so i'm there like a bobby so join me yeah and i, I shouldn't say i can't I, well, you don't I mean, care. I don't it's know not if that I we don't care. I can't yeah. have conflict or make choices because there's some things to. that I do, you know, and I'm, I'm reminded from, you know, significant others that when I don't want to do something, I don't do it. So I'm in, wow. I am, but also there's, as far as with the public, that's like what a lot of people don't know, and sometimes I do get vocal about is like, I'm not really fond of doing stuff during Black History Month. I don't like doing Juneteenth anything. Like, I don't. Tell me why. Because a lot of times those were the only times I would get X to do yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that feels like a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. Like I think one time there was like a... I'm black 365, y'all. 
Yeah, there's one. So, there's one. It was even so absurd. Somebody asked me for do a, a show at a university like two years from now because that was a February that they had free. Like they had all this time in between, but they asked me if. Uh, so mm. this has been in yeah, my career, and it just it happens a lot. And I'm sure I could hook up with other artists and folks, right. not even just artists, but some people seem to be great with it and love it, and you know. I'm not here to say what you should and shouldn't do. I just know I won't mm-hmm. do it. Like, I'm, yeah, period. So you are okay with conflict. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. No, I shouldn't right. say I can't. It's yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, you don't, and that doesn't mean you like it. You said right. you don't but, like it. But I'm, yeah. I'm, I want to get better at flexing that muscle because also it comes with the approval and being liked and all mm-hmm. that. But uh, I got family, I got a wife, I got people who know me. Like, so. I get better just not caring. With Listen, other Bobby, I, I have said over many <laughs> podiums, uh, it, you know, I, I'm so happy and honored to be here, but I will leave here and go home to a husband who loves me. Yeah. And that is what matters. Right. That that's the thing that I hear you saying. Yeah. So we, we have to talk about talk about Prince, but 365 days of dad. I know you've been asked this before, but I, and so I have to ask no, you, right, yeah. will you do it again? No. No. Because it was it I mean, it was such a lightning in the bottle. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah, I could probably do a lot better now. Probably could. Really? What? what how? In what way? The Just art, the I, art itself. Um, I know. One, I wouldn't be doing it by myself. Two, I have a better understanding of what will actually happen and take place, uh-huh. and so knowing what, how to set boundaries, right? Um, size would change like there's a lot of things that i know i would do better so you wouldn't i wouldn't be def- as exhausted now because you have that knowledge yeah and, and i could coach somebody on how to do it if they wanted to because i got asked to do a motherhood and i t- and i thought about the idea for a second but then i was like there's so many artists out here who need something and i was like and there are a lot of there's still a lot of black women that people don't know and who don't oh, get exposure get so yeah. for them that would be a great like it worked well absolutely but also you know one of them kind of answers like I feel like every day I do th- do 365 days of dad, you know, because I am who I am today because of that project. Sure. So you're still getting For it. Sure. Just might not look the same. Yeah. So you're and still getting it. Did it because you say and we're and promise you we're going to talk about Prince. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you you were saying that you did it, you know, if you needed to make money. And so from that point. Did your finances, as an artist, because that is so central, doing what you love and then, you know, having to pay the light bill, right? Right. As as an artist, being able to do it full time. From that time, from that project, were you able to truly become financially stable and self-sufficient and the artist that you financially wanted to be? No, not at all. So, yeah. Again, Are you now? Uh, I'm I'm definitely in a better place. Yeah, definitely in a better place. Um, but with that project, yeah, I didn't, again, not factoring any things, purchase of supplies, right. shipping, mm-hmm. any life incidentals are going to happen. So, again, when I ran out, before the end of the year, it was already mostly paid off. Money was already gone. So that whole second year, mm. finishing this project, I had to take on other jobs. Right. And I had to keep getting, you know, so it was just, yeah, it was a lot. Wow. Yeah. Well, was the original, after you, did you graduate from Grambling? I did. Um after Grambling, you became an illustrator? After Grambling, I came back here, worked at Union Station, and then became a caricature artist of Six Flags. Yeah. 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 And then after that, I became an illustrator. And at when, it doesn't matter when, because at some point, <laughs> Prince becomes aware of your artwork. Yeah, that was the year after Six Flags. So Six Flags was 97, 98 is when um, I believe... Because there was two times. There was the first time when he came here to perform over in Illinois mm-hmm. and donated um, groceries to Dignity House on Union, which isn't there anymore. But mm-hmm. Which you had worked. Well, I didn't work. I got asked. To me and another artist got asked to hang our work because Prince might okay. come through. One of those kind of exposure oh, opportunities. Okay. 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 Um, and, of course, at the moment, we thought it was a bust because, of course, Prince didn't show up. Just, you know, two young ladies came and dropped off groceries. But we didn't know they videotaped. The work, ah, and so some week, some weeks later, it. I got a phone call from his people that he saw some stuff and wanted to know if certain pieces were available, and so he bought three paintings: then Blues Man, uh, Serenaded Street, and Late Night Study. And then, I was saying two years later, 
his folks called again and asked him if he had any more work available. And then that's when he saw the piece, Rainbow Children, um, With Love, and a few others, a character of himself. So he bought those. And then he bought all the rights to the painting, uh, and it became the album cover because it was out as a print, and right. he didn't want it out there under any mm -hmm. other name. Mm -hmm. He, you know, it's a Prince thing. He's like, I wanted to be called Rainbow Children, and so, you know, that's how the story wow. came to be. How how y your demeanor isn't changing as you're talking about Prince. I I'm I, my demeanor. You're, yeah, you're like that's how that's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. Then <laughs> well, you, you know what? I've, in almost from the beginning, I've always told people that you know. And I get the whole name because I don't even like that, that I got to do that in order for people to put a certain value on my work. For sure. I get it. So yeah. I've always said it and I've always meant it because I just think about how hard people work every day. So mm. I kind of value everyday dollars over a celebrity dollar. Like that feels good. And, and you know, at where I am now in my career, getting certain calls from certain corporations and all this. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are great. One, not even because of the corporation, because, you know, it's a better check than right. an everyday individual. And also exposure, more people seeing your work. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, I, I've i had people tell me they get given me their last $20 because oh they had to have one of my prints. Wow. Like, and that's a big deal. Wow. You know, I know that, you know. I think this goes back to creative black artists battling ignorance. Yeah. Right. Do a lot of layers of this life. A lot of layers. A <laughs> lot of layers. And... Uh, to remain humble as you you have, that's a battle because yeah, the, I met some jerks. Yeah, yeah, and I don't want to be one of them. So. And and the 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 allure and the notoriety mm -hmm. and the fame that has come. I drive by your artwork every day because yeah. I live in in Illinois. Yep. So tell me how that came about. You it, and what I'm speaking of is on 64. Is that 64? Is that, yeah. It's right, a whole split. Yeah, right before 55, 64 split. There's like 19 highways right there, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a little chaotic <laughs> right there. It's a little there. chaotic. Yeah. You're on that wall. You right. painted that entire wall. So I, I see it every day. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's one of them DEI projects, you know. Diversity, equity, inclusion. Yes. We need so, some blackness. I know, yeah. So <laughs> there's a whole. that's a whole other podcast, too. But. Yeah. <laughs> That was created because NASCAR was coming. And, ah, there yeah. You go. And so the raceway okay. wanted to have this grand image for people driving in. So mm -hmm. they, you know, and I love how, you know, it's on the highway behind the walls, East St. Louis, you know, so this is a way of showing love to East St. Louis. And, you know, it's a lot of stuff on face value. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about it? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you're it's, it is It is beautiful work. Uh, I like. I, I, like I love the, your I love the project. I love yeah. the. I love the. I love the paint, and I love scale. So from that aspect, uh, I loved it, mm -hmm. and I love the message. You know, I love what we put up. Mm -hmm. I love how mm -hmm. people are connecting with it, and all that. What's next? What's next? You have so much. I, I was surprised you were able to come because I, you're like working every day. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Am I wrong? Are you not no, working every I mean, day? I'm always working. Okay. I'm always working. We're all, yeah, we're definitely blessed. We keep getting opportunities. But yeah, yeah more murals coming. Um, working on painting on some fabric um, with a local designer to mm -hmm. get into that world. And yeah, we just want to just keep growing things that I can't even think about. Like I just love painting. I don't know how it's going to transpire and what it's going to come on. So yeah, we just is more it, more greatness. Is there a is there a dream? project a dream project mm. have you ever been asked that have you thought that way i haven't thought that way yeah. how, how do you think then that's a great question i'm full of them yeah you are <laughs> <laughs> to have a grand project that i want to work with i don't i just you know what i get it i love working and so a lot of it as far as the battling ignorance piece, I've a lot of times it comes to me in accepting the journey, mm -hmm. the actual working as the gift. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like 365 days of dad, when I got to the last one, you know, I remember being parked on the side of a Tower Grove Park and posting it, you know, and no balloons fell out the sky or, <laughs> you know, it was just like, I'm done. <laughs> it's like, and so it was just like, and it, sometimes it kind of feels like that, like getting this mural job, like this wall drive by. And it's like, ooh, that's going to be my wall. Like, And then I get to it. And then when it's done, you know, I post it. I mean, there's no really fanfare, like, but 
sometimes getting up in the morning and going to do it, you know, putting a mask on my face, you yeah. know, just holding stuff in my hand, realizing, wow, I, I get to do this every day. Like, I try to accept that as the gift because if I get so excited on the trophies, right, then I'm missing the all the jewels the that come daily. Right, right, right. The gift is the actual work. Mm. Are you are you to yourself like Janet Jackson's song? What have you done for me lately? Are you are you that way to yourself? Like what have I what am I going to do next? What have I done lately? Mm. You, you you aren't thinking. I want to you know paint a cruise ship. I mean you're just thinking. I just want to do this work every day. Uh, yeah, I just love the fact that people just keep asking me to do it. Yeah. Like, so, Dream Guy, yeah, I love to see my work on shoes. I love to see, Ooh. you know, clothes, like all this kind of, yeah, I would love Can to see. Can we not make that happen? The manager and the wife is in the studio. <laughs> Are we working? It's happening. It's happening? Is that a big yes? And I was about to lose my mind over here when you asked get, about uh, Dream Projects, and he's like, I don't have any. I'm like, she knows. We can't hear her exactly because she's off, she's <laughs> off mic, but... But but she is in the room. Yes, she is. And she, okay, can yeah. you feel her coaching you over I there? I can. I can. So, and so if I think about some of the things that we've discussed, like dream projects, it's not necessarily a dream project. Like, plans. but the idea of like working with folks like Tiffany's, and, you know, these, you know, because I, I see other artists, I'm like, how did you get that? Like, and those things we can't see. You don't know how connections happen, but. Just keep putting the work out there and, keep, and keep asking for it. Absolutely. And so I know there's things that we I can't even conceive that are going to happen. You know? uh, Kamabi, I have every Tiffany, blue, not every, but most Tiffany blue boxes that I have. That's what women do with them. Uh, yeah, we got, we got, keep, we got, we got, a, we got quite the collection over on yeah. in our house. Yes. You can, well. <laughs> well, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Marie Ta Maria Tosh, Tish. Yeah. I don't know who that is. It's but a jeweler. I, okay. So that's on somebody's list. Yeah. So you, we have those boxes. And I, as you as you said, Tiffany's, I thought I can see that box. I can see your work on that box. So I don't have a list. We have a list. <laughs> and I say, let us keep growing this list. I'll keep painting and being ready. You just keep creating the list. And it's a yes for me, you know. I even <laughs> even the hat you're wearing now. Yeah, I would love to do hats because I love a hat. I'm a my hat husband, guy. I'm gonna roll out this chair. <laughs> I'm a hat guy. Yeah. You are a hat guy. You know who else is a hat guy? Who's that? Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric, and see, there you go. Let's see. Who had a hat line? I don't know if he still has the hat line. There you go. Right. Which he I did said, wear some dope hats. He, absolutely. Mm -hmm. My one side of, of the closet. This is such a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> one side, but a, but a good one. One side of the closet uh, it, in my home is my husband's. Several shelves are just hats. Oh wow! Okay. He is a he is a hat. Yes. He nice. Is chapeau. The, he's gonna wear every day. He would wear a hat. So we got to get the hats going. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the the brains of the organization over there. Right. The talent. The brains. Right. Um, how did you decide? On the imagery, because you there's certain lines and certain colors that you use that clearly are, are your work. And every artist decides what the medium is. Mm -hmm. And then some people are landscape. Some people are portraits. Some right. Every artist decides right. you know, where they're going to go with it and, and what's in their heart to put on the canvas or on the, on, on the piece, whatever it is. How, how did you and when did you decide? When I started illustrating and just knowing my personality, like, I'm, yeah, I don't like a lot of steps. I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> and so working inside of my home, I knew I couldn't use oil because oh. all the fumes and everything. Oh, okay. And so once I saw that people were using acrylic, then that became my medium because I could work on it right there in the kitchen, dining room. You know, it dries fast. I need immediate gratification. So th there's a lot of reasons for all that. Um, so I use acrylic. And then also because I wanted to get out on walls and paint big, and, mm -hmm. you know, I had people, you know, friends kept telling me, like, try to can, try to can, try to can. So I initially, uh, eventually taught myself how to spray paint, which is also acrylic paint, mm -hmm. cause, you know, it dries fast. And so those are my two main mediums, you know, and lately really falling in love with my iPad um, and drawing digitally. So, oh. but as far as colors and all that, a lot of times, yeah, it's, it's a feeling. Like I love just using a lot of color. I don't. 
I, you know, f f yeah, when folks say, you know, I, I see your colors, I don't always connect with that. I'm sure there's some truth to that, but when I go on the, you know, art store or somewhere, I don't even need paint, but sometimes I just get excited about some of the colors I see. Yeah. Because I just like color and I like seeing different color combinations. Yeah. And so that's what inspires me. And as far as, you know, being a caricature artist, you know, doing three, six, five days with dad, knowing we don't see enough of us that inspires mm -hmm. me painting you know almost exclusively black folks right i love natural hair because that keeps getting you know it just keeps coming up in the news and being issues with us just For wearing sure. our hair as yeah. is students kids boys like right. So Children. I'm almost always paint natural hair, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. But then also, but then on the other flip side of that, like I love it. I love, I love color and I love design of line. So I had this whole abstract itch that I got to scratch. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and that took me a long time to get that because I just didn't understand it in the beginning. But now it comes a lot more easily because all I'm seeing is my designs as if you were squinting and you don't see a face. Oh. So for me, it's still the same work, but I get that it's not, it's not necessarily a face there. But right, right, right. For me, it's still the same process. It's still and the same way. You are still a black I, artist, so. Well, there's that too. So it's right. still the same way I put that together. And then finding out that lot, there were a lot of black abstract artists back in the day that were trying to address issues. Yeah. I couldn't necessarily see them in the work. And some of it was just being the abstract artist was the pushback. Because we yeah. were told so long of all these things we couldn't do. And, and there's still not that many of us, even with Instagram, right. that we see as successful. Like, this is all they do for a living. Right. Because even in that, I'm finding out so much behind the scenes that, you know, what does it mean to be an artist? The art world, making a living as an artist. Mm -hmm. The business You sell it. a painting. You sell a print. And right. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, also, these are adults that have families that have to have a salary that take care of you so how does all that play in so i'm i'm thinking about all that stuff when i'm working it's a lot it is a lot but yeah i still wouldn't change it for anything you know i still wouldn't change it for anything so a lot of the color and all that like a lot of times that influences you know all that is there and coming out when i'm this is another example of of me as a as as a fan of yours um and and a customer right assigning what I assume to be the reason, right? <laughs> and I, I've just always thought that, and, and I think I think I'm correct in this because you've said it in so many words that the representation does matter. Do you remember that that th there's this app that you could put your face in and then they then then it would find old artwork of you. And then for black people, there was no, it didn't. I didn't know about th that. I, I have to find that story for wow. you. I'll send it to you. Um, but then for black people who put their pictures in, there wasn't any ancient art or whatever mm -hmm. of us because it just there weren't there aren't pictures of it. And but there were always black artists. Right. So clearly representation of us in art as as black artists, but also black art matters. It matters to me as a woman. Um, why does it matter to you as an artist? Um, I go back to, to like think about Harlem Renaissance mm. and like, that was one of the first times we started actually painting ourselves. Right. And I'm sure people were doing it. Um, cause I'm, I'm not going to believe that even on plantations, there wasn't some artist somewhere drawing something that looked like somebody else. We just haven't seen them yet. Right. But cause that didn't just come out of anywhere, but thinking about even them. Like some of them, you know, had to move to Paris, you know, almost all of them died penniless yeah. unless they became a professor, you know. And so that's been a whole thing. Um, and even in major museums, like, yeah, our kids or and even adults in our community aren't all, always really interested in going because we've seen it there. all before. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen it in school. Right. It's the same stuff you're going to see on the wall, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, I think as more and more work that we can connect with shows up, then, you know, we get interested, you know. But, again, representation both on canvas and liking to be out in public or in schools and paint mm -hmm. live so kids can actually see somebody doing it as opposed to just a project on Instagram. I mean, Instagram is helping because 
now a reel will show up where you can see somebody doing fast painting. You right. Know? So you know it's happening. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're making a living at it because these could be people who are doing that after they got off work. So, right, at Popeye's or something. So how for you, sure, for so, sure. So we need to be able to have examples where kids can, where you can say, hey, I actually do this every day for a living. Like, there is a way to make it happen. You right. Know? There's not one way, but it can happen. So that's the representation for me, both on canvas and in person, in, in flesh. In, in right. life and in business. Yeah. I, I, I would add to, to you for you that just the beauty of what you do is so meaningful to me as a woman. And, I've, and I said my age earlier, 61, that um, only recently could look in the mirror and see my own beauty and mm. even think, oh, I've, I could get, I've, I've done how many episodes? I don't know. And I've never gotten emotional yet, but this is a moment that I might get emotional that I never thought that I was pretty. Mm. I always describe myself as a handsome woman. I used to say that of wow. myself okay. because society was, you know, yeah. did this is not, no, 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 this was not the intention. Right. Absolutely. And so only recently did I do I feel that about myself. And but your artwork makes me feel beautiful. Mm-hmm. And when you when you talk about your focus on natural hair, that's a part of that, too. And my hair is up like this just for him <laughs> and his <laughs> wife, because his wife is stunning and her hair is just like mine. Right. We, we both have locks. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah. We got to see ourselves. We have to see ourselves. Mm. And it is about you can make a living. It's the business side of it. It is representation. But the representation is also so heart and soul that I see myself in your work and I see myself as valuable and Mm. I see myself as worthy and I see myself as loved and loving and beautiful. And that in 2023 and 2023 2023, and 2012, when you did 365 Days of Dad, is revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. But yeah, I just want to keep getting more walls and just keep putting more of us up. Yeah. Thank you. And so... When Tiffany's happens, can I, can I get Absolutely. the invitation to the reception, yes. to the <laughs> unveiling? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, are you? What are you surprised about in 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 your success? Are you surprised at the acceptance or the recognition that you're now getting? Or I don't know. Like even driving over here, I was thinking about what I always say when I'm in schools, like. Um, being an artist, you know, I liken it to yeah, being in the NBA. Like in when they don't perform well on the court, mm-hmm. you know, they'll get traded, they get right. fired, whatever. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they become an asset then. Like, but it's like they can't do that unless they practice, unless they believe they can do it, unless they eating right and all that. And yeah. so putting in the work. Yeah, as much as I draw and put energy in this, like I'm not surprised because it didn't come by accident. Right. Like I, you know, I put out there that this is what I want to do, like all the time. I might get surprised at who calls Mm -hmm. or who's asking for work, but I'm not surprised that, you know, that I get to continue to do this. But yeah, in a world where there's no, there's no blueprint. Or even we've been told that, you know, this is something you can do, you know, not even just as an artist, but even as a black person. Like, right. You know, this is for other people, like for you to make a living doing that. It's yeah. They, mm. they want us to believe that this can't, can't happen. happen. But no, knowing that, it, you know, I've been defiant. And even from college, like one day, like before I had to do my senior exhibit, um, yeah, it just dawned on me. I was like, wait a minute, like you guys are professors. Like you you have not once while I've been here told me on how I could do this for a living. Like mm-hmm. y'all are just grooming professors. Like I was like, this isn't what That's I came right. here for. Like yeah. I wanna be an artist. Like But nobody you know what that means. Like you move to New York, you don't know half of them are broke, you know, being catered by some rich person. Like nobody knew what to do, you know. But mm. all I you know, I just said I graduated and I went right back to my apartment. You know, eventually my trailer in in Louisiana. You know, luckily I got a job that brought me up here. You know, because yeah, I was just like every day, like, you know, I just want to draw, so I'm gonna figure something out. 
you know, but just being more intentional and being intentional about getting better. Right. You know, and not just putting stuff out, you know, without caring about what I put out. Like, you know, I should be, you know, I, you know, I expect to get a lot more than I've gotten us up to now. So, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm just, you know, telling, you know, God, you know, universe that, you know, I accept this, this challenge. Is, yeah. So, you know, I'm here. bring it on. I'm ready. Like, right. Yeah. It is it before, before I let you go is what kind of place is St. Louis for the black artist? Ask that often. <laughs> that or how's yeah. the art scene? Like, is it welcoming? Is it, it's is it ready? For, it's, is I don't know, it... It's kind of different for me, I, I think, for in sure. a way, because my whole career has been here. Mm -hmm. And so, even if not always financially getting rewarded here, I, I'll look at most of the people who bought 365 Days of Dad or when I get a sale online. You know, how often I'll see a Missouri address or a St. Louis address. Like, I've gotten a lot of support here. Um, I think part of it is just because I keep ex putting it out Yourself there and out I keep there. exposing yeah. myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think also just come, going back to being humble and personality, I think that's gone a long way. And, you know, yeah, just not being accepted. Um, but as far as what St. Louis, I think we definitely had a potential um, – to be more than we are now mm -hmm. yeah we have a definitely have a rich history in music you know and we have a lot of artists here like other places that are you know that do great work um i don't know and i think there are plenty of opportunities i don't think the people who can offer the opportunities realize that they hold opportunity in their hand that gives my the mm. you know because i see a lot of places that don't have a lot of art so there's a lot of opportunity i think it's just people don't I don't, I don't think everybody connects with art as needing to, to happen. Like, I ain't going to call anybody out, but somebody wanted to give some of my art away, you know, and they wanted to give, like, 20 pieces to guests framed, and they wanted all this to happen for $50. Yep. And Excuse I'm like, me. Yeah. This is like, I'm like, this is 2023. each piece? No, no, no. For the whole. <laughs> oh. And my wife said it. When it, right before it happened, I was like, no, nah, there's no way. And when it came in and, it, and I found out it was true, I was like, wow. I was like, I didn't even think people could actually think like that. But that's, I think that wow. it's not even Jeff. I think it's just, there's no connection with the arts. And that makes sense. Art and leaving, I don't know. There's just no connection a lot of times with what art hmm. means and means, that it matters. Right. And the person, people who cr create art, because keep getting asked to do stuff for free. Even to this day, like, and they know they've heard my name forever. And, you know, and I'll tell them, like, 30 years I've been doing this. You don't, yeah, you're not, there's some people, certain careers, and I can do something 30 years, and you're going to say, hey, can you, you know, give us something so we can expose you? Like, you know, we were just having this conversation yesterday, like, yeah, it don't need to be exposed anymore. Like, I am. People need to be exposed to me, but I don't need y'all to expose me to whoever, like, with my time, mm -hmm. like mm. I've done that. Uh, creative black <laughs> artist battling ignorance. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought when I read the acronym the first time. Mm -hmm. That is a level of ignorance that, yeah. that you as an artist are battling, oh, not man. just your own all the time. Yeah. But that is that's a level of ignorance for all me all the time. And 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 <laughs> I've I've often thought this when you use the terminology ignorance that people bristle, uh, and it has a negative connotation. But right. that simply means you do not know. Just you don't know. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so we are here at Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel to let you know <laughs> <laughs> that you cannot offer an artist $50 for 20 pieces. They try to. And you said no. Thank you. Thank well, you for saying no. <laughs> Thank you for saying no. So when uh, so that, that answers where St. Louis is. So the question then becomes how do we cultivate the art in a way that people see it as valuable, viable, meaningful, and not just the art, but the artist. I mean, we, we got a dope sister at Rack. You know, I see her. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. She's doing she's doing things. Yes, and, we yeah, do. We definitely have people here who, you know, are intentional about, you know, pushing it. You know, shout Regional out to Gina. Arts Commission, I should say that yeah. for those. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Gina at um, Cranzbergs. Mm -hmm. Like, there's people who I see their passion yeah. and wanting the things to happen. And, and these are and relatively new. Yeah. Pushback. Right. You know, but, yeah, there's folks who... Got their fight, and you know, and, you know, Amber's new to the arts world in this aspect, but 
yeah, she, she even helps me push walls down. And, mm-hmm. She's a kick a door in woman. Yeah, she is. I'm a kick a door in woman. And a say no. And a say no person woman. when I, you know, I'll cringe. And she's like, no, we ain't doing that. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is great because. I love again, it. Again, yeah, I was, because art is what it is. Like for me, I didn't feel like I could say no because I didn't okay. know when another request, request would be would coming. Come. You yeah. Know? yeah. But yeah. yeah, I'm learning to just trust it you know there are plenty of yeses there are plenty of opportunities coming like you know and she'll always say like you know i'm saying yes to something i'm saying no to something else so you say yes to something and then you cringe through it and then this other opportunity comes in but mm-hmm. you bogged down by something you don't want to do like that you didn't want to do in the first place su- such a tricky space but you just have to have faith and trust and again believing that you know i've yeah. earned what i'm getting yeah i'm with amber it's not a tricky space at all it's a very yeah. clear yeah very clear space yeah. That this I'm not going to do. I don't want to. Yeah. I have. I have a. I have. I'm going to let you go, Kababi. <laughs> but uh, I. I. You know. I take screenshots all the time of various things. And there's one um, recent screenshot that I that I took um, that I'm going to read to you as a mantra for you. Okay. Uh, due to not wanting to, I will not be. Due to not wanting to, I will not be. So when someone asks you to do something, due to the fact that I don't want to do that, I am not going to do that. Period dot. Period dot. <laughs> and that's not confrontational. No. That's none of that. I said, I, I, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. So no. Or you can use the yes but measure. We are having class here today. <laughs> you do the yes. Yes, I would love to do that, but I can't. Right. How about that? Mm-hmm. I am so happy that you are still here because somebody could have scooped you up and you could have decided to, you know, say no. I, and I'm not making it in St. Louis. I'm going to go elsewhere. I'm so glad you stayed. This uh, is home. Yeah. And this is home for you. And that we mm-hmm. get to see the evolution of of your business model and, and of your work itself and get to see your work in so many different spaces. I'm so happy about that. And thank you for all the work that you continue to do to elevate the arts um, in the St. Louis region and to elevate black artists in this region who who need you as a champion. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Kababi, for joining me on Listen St. Louis. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to your manager over there. Cause she's, yes. she's one thank who, you, Amber. I never even talked to him. I just <laughs> talked to her. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel. And I will repeat my request because we do need you to share this podcast so other people can um, be benefactors of this conversation. Because what we are trying to do here, we what we intend to do here, what we know we are doing here is changing the narrative about St. Louis, changing the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves and that change leads to thought process, leads to a change in behavior, even leads to change in policy and a change in our community. So that's why you share. It's it's that simple and that deep. Subscribe as well and download this podcast and go to 9pbs.org. That is how you can listen to our previous podcast. Thank you again for joining us. We will be back with more Listen St. Louis with Carol Daniel. St. Louis with Carol Daniel is supported in part by Midwest Bank Center, the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation, and Orvin and Latrice Kimbrough.